This video will guide you on how to set up your fundraiser in Charms. Before you set up your fundraiser, you need to consider whether you want to track goods that are given to students and if and how profit is to be credited. The way you answer these questions will determine how you enter transactions for fundraisers. If you haven't already viewed the video explaining the overview of the Charms fundraiser system, you may want to take a look at it before you set up your fundraiser. You can get to the Setup Fundraiser screen in two ways. If you're in the Setup area, first click the Financials black tab, then select Fundraisers from the drop-down list. You can also get to the Setup Fundraiser screen from the Finances area. Click the Finances icon at the top of the screen, then click the Fundraisers black tab. Select Setup Fundraisers from the drop-down list. When you are ready to set up your fundraiser, the first step is to enter a name. It should be a name that is meaningful to your organization, such as catalog sale or car wash. It should also be a unique name that doesn't exist in your account already. If you try to give two fundraising activities the same name, you'll see an error message. If your project involves an outside vendor, you can enter all of the vendor information here if you wish. Remember that first question you needed to consider about your fundraiser about value given versus money turned in? Here it is automatically match value given to money turned in. If your fundraiser does not have items given to the students to deliver or sell, then you'll want to select yes for the question. Examples where this applies include car washes, marchathons, and other types of fundraisers where no product is being sold, as well as catalog sales where the company ships the product directly to the customer. When you set up your fundraiser with this option selected, Charms automatically generates a balancing value given amount into the student's fundraising ledger whenever you enter a money collected transaction. You may also want to say yes here if any items are being given to the student for sale or delivery when it's a fundraiser where you first take in money and later on you give the product to the student to deliver, but you're not that concerned about tracking product given out for delivery. Again, selecting yes on this question automatically generates a balancing value given transaction whenever money is collected. Enter no for this question if you do want to enter the value given as a number of items or retail value, either when you distribute the product for sale or for delivery. If you accept the default value of this question as no, you'll need to manually enter value given transactions either on the student fundraiser ledger screen for each student or on the global value given screen. The next decision is the track by item count question. This one relates to the importance of balancing the value given amount with the amount of money collected for each student. Note that if you have said yes to the prior match value question, then leave track by item count set to no and ignore the following description. You do not need to enter items or retail value. If all of your items are at the same selling price, then select Yes for Track by Item Count. Then enter the sales price of the items in the Retail Cost per Item box that appears. If you're selling multiple items at different costs, keep the default value of No for Track by Item Count feature. Charms can only deal with one retail price for this feature, so you cannot use it. You will enter Value Given instead. In this example, we'll choose No. Keep in mind that if you answered no for the prior match value given question, note that when you enter money collected transactions, there will need to be balancing value given transactions entered to keep everything in balance. If you answered yes, you don't have to enter this matching value given. Charms will generate it automatically. Now you'll need to think about how the student's profit will be calculated. If your project has a fixed student profit rate overall, select Computed to have Charms automatically calculate the student profit share of the sales amount for each transaction. If you select Computed, enter the percentage in the box. For example, if your catalog sale offers a flat 40% student profit, select Computed and enter 40 in the percentage box. Note that if your project has, say, 50% overall profit, and 30% goes to the organization and 20% goes to the student, enter 20 for the computed profit because we're dealing with student profit here. Organization profit simply results from the money turned in versus what is paid to the fundraising company. Another special case for profit is if all money being raised goes strictly to the organization 
and students don't get any profit credit. Then choose computed and enter 0%. If you have differing profit percentages depending upon the items sold, or you will not know the student profit until later on or after the fundraiser is finished, or perhaps profit is based upon hours worked as part of overall money raised, set student profit to manual. Now enter a purpose for the fundraiser. If you have a profit goal for this activity, enter a profit goal amount to have Charms keep track of your progress towards the goal you set. Now select Create Fundraiser to save the fundraising activity. The list at the bottom shows all fundraisers you have created in your system. Select one fundraiser as your default fundraiser. Select OK to confirm the default fundraiser. If the fundraiser does not have any transactions posted, you can select the X to delete the fundraiser. You can only select fundraisers that do not have any transactions posted on them. Select one from the drop-down list and select Delete to remove the fundraiser from your system. You can select the pencil icon if you need to make changes to the fundraiser information. On the Modify Fundraising Activity screen, you can update any of the information. However, Charms cannot change the activity name for any transactions that have already been posted in the bank account ledgers or in the audit trail. Also, any changes to the student profit calculation will start with the next transaction posted. It is not retroactive. Be sure to check out our library of videos for help with other Charms Office procedures.